defied my ambassador, defied me, refused to acknowledge that I am the rightful queen of England. It is true, my lord. Now she shows her true colours. But she is the legitimate heir of Henry the Seventh, and her claims to succeed your majesty must be acknowledged. Not by me. Never. Declare war, unite Scotland with England. War. Is that all you men know? Unite Scotland against England, you mean? So, she summons all Scotland to take up arms for her. Will they come? Only a rabble of musk troopers from the border, where Bothwell's strength lies. <laughs> Mercenaries, they won't stand up and fight. But can I support rebellion? So near to my own throne. Remember that. Neither can I afford to take sides. And you've done nothing to destroy me. When was I your enemy? Always. Always your life was a threat to mine. How? Why? You were born too close to my throne. It was you or I. I'm a queen. You've been a woman. See where it's brought you. What do you know of my life? You were born a queen. Honors, thrones, everything fell into your lap. I started with nothing. Robbed even of a name, not acknowledged by my father. My own mother, yes, Anne Boleyn, was executed. But I fought my way upward, inch by inch, until I wore the crown. Now be silent then whilst I speak for you all. For I am England. We must come to cannon and see if you will hear them. If you use threats of that kind, I will chase you out of my kingdom. But your grace, you must listen. Must? Little man, little man. Must is not a word to use to princes. Well, young raven, well, you have not preened your feathers. You have sailed from Lisbon, your grace, in a fishing boat, single-handed. What is your name? Michael Ingleby. Where is my ship and where is your father? Both lost, your grace. I am come to live or die amongst you all. To lay down for my God and for my kingdom and for my people, my honor and my blood, even in the dust. I know I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and valor of a king, and of a king of England, too. We thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks. Captain Thorpe, you will at least show the proper respect for my ministers. And so you have taken it upon yourself to remedy the defects of Spanish justice. In so far as it lies within my power, yes, Your Grace. And you conceive it to be part of your mission to assault and loot the ship of an ambassador to the court. Captain Thorpe, do you imagine that we are at war with Spain? Your Grace, Spain is at war with the world. Enough of this. Listen to me, every one of you. Never again will you dare in my presence to condone your crimes under the mask of patriotism. No more of such talk, do you hear? And for the future, let me warn you that any unwarranted attack upon the person or property of Spanish subjects would cost the guilty party his head. His head, is that clear? And name you, Earl of Nottingham. Why, that's impossible. Keep silent. I'll not be silent. Do you intend that this Earl of Nottingham will take precedence in court over me? He'll take precedence in court over you as he did in wisdom at Cadiz. You were in command and abused it to put Essex first and England second. Why mean nothing to you? Nothing. You dare turn your back on Elizabeth of England? You dare? To be a queen is to be less than human put pride before desire, to search men's hearts for tenderness, to find only ambition, to cry out in the dark for one unselfish voice, hear only the dry rustle of papers of state. Your Majesty. 
Would you leave your cloak in the mire, Captain? Would I be so vainglorious as to wear the cloak that my oh, queen has? Oh, pick it up, man. Pick it up. You have a wit, Captain. A poor reflection of your own, ma'am. Oh, flattery, flattery. That may not be the best policy, ma'am. It is I who make the policy of this realm. I and I alone. Just as I made you. I did not know you were ill, ma'am. Of course not. The plague knows not whom it kills, but no matter. Sir Walter will not sail. He will return here to be with me. Take care how you treat your queen's possessions, Mr. Strugmott. Twenty years since a fever took my hair. Do you think I've ever put myself on the lists against pretty faces and empty heads? I am Elizabeth Tudor. You shall sail the ship yourself. Aye. This does not mean I forgive you nor the slight you married. I want the world. You promise me. Your tutors tell me you have brains to match your looks. It is a very poor compliment to my brains, Your Majesty. You go back to Hatfield tomorrow and stay there till the end of your days. I don't ever want to see your face again. I will not go back to Hatfield. What is I said I'll not go back to Hatfield. Therefore, it is clear you were coming from the Admiral's room. Is it? It's the simplest logic. Your premise is right, but your conclusion is wrong. The syllogism... Don't try to befuddle me by using words beyond my understanding. I'm sorry, madam, but they're difficult to avoid. If you were Queen of England, what would you do, huh? Would you give your Admiral the opportunity to do great deeds? I'd give him the opportunities he never dared to dream about. I'd send him around the globe as the Portuguese do. I'd send him to the New World to let the Spaniards know that they are no longer masters of it. That won't be easy. We're a small country, Bess. That can be remedied, Tom. It can be remedied. Tom Seymour, the great Lord Admiral, jealous. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Stop it, I say. But it told me it's so funny. I said stop it. Stop it. I was beside myself. I didn't know what I was doing. You couldn't help it. You either had to kiss me or... And I think it was better that you slapped me. For years you've been conspiring with your lover to Take undermine... Take care. You're not very wise. Before you go on, remember I'm second to the throne. You thought of that, have you? As the Admiral's wife, you thought to take the throne for yourself. You'll answer for that with your head, Lord Seymour. Stay where you are, Captain. You are not in a dockside brawl, nor on the deck of the Golden Hind. You are in our presence. No man calls me coward, Your Majesty. I am no man, Captain. I am your queen. And I call you what I think fit. Sit. Sit. Till I order you to rise. Then defend yourself. Then speak as you please. Blankenberg faces a bleak winter, Captain. Scant feeding for so many men. And now it's too late to relieve them. We are displeased, Captain Drake. You know the quality of your own men. It'd be no hard matter for them to keep the Spaniards at bay. Five or six hundred men? Ha! These are no odds. This is good news, Master Trevelyan. Tell Drake I love him again. I have a request here for you to inspect the garrison, Sir Miles. Very right and proper. You are free to leave at once. To go to Blankenberg, Your Majesty. I imagine you are anxious to do so. You must be very proud of your garrison. Drake tells me you are a Welsh terrier, Captain Williams. You hung on to the throat of Spain and they could not shake you off. I would that I had more such terriers to keep open the Dutch ports. Thank you, Your Majesty. I did not guess that Sir Miles was brave enough to take command. Then perhaps I may have your permission to return. And rescue him. How many men has Sir Miles to keep him company? You have his estimates, Your Majesty. He has his original garrison. Less 13 men. Hmm. <laughs> Armandosa, buenos dias. I'm distressed to hear Your Excellency has yet another complaint. We're not at war with Spain. The King of Spain's my kinsman and my friend, and yet you sink and burn his ships and pillage their treasure. Madam, I. Am I to condone murder and theft? Ma'am, I did it. Be silent. Sir Francis Walsingham had this pirate taken to the tower and confined there until we make known our pleasure. I'm surprised. You're an ordinary man. From the reports I've had, I expected a giant. 
Did we manage to deceive His Excellency? Not entirely, ma'am, and not for long. Sometimes it leads to a curious situation when we find ourselves employing the same men. <laughs> then we may as well be hanged for a sheep as a lamb. Mm. I give you three years, Drake. Three years and no more. See that you bring me a good profit. Some Spanish mariners found the bodies of Drake and his men washed ashore. Well, sing them. <laughs> He's alive. Drake's alive and well. Come, ma'am, this is a treaty with Spain, not a death warrant. How can you be sure? Well, tonight they delivered themselves into our hands. All of them. They'll all go to the tower. The Queen of Scots will be moved to Fotheringay Castle and tried for treason. Money, what do you want? More money? More money? What about the shiploads of Spanish gold I brought to Your Majesty? What about all the pearls around Your Majesty's neck? How dare you! I've hanged men for less. We're both pirates, Drake. You're a great queen, ma'am. I will survive. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. I may not be a lion, but I am a lion's cub, and I have a lion's heart. I had thought if all the world had turned against me, you would not. I, I would die for you. What has that to do with it? I want to be young again. I want to have my hopes again. And I want not to feel time like a dead child in my womb. You must not speak to me like that. It is not fit. You are a married man, and I. We will deal more honestly with each other from now on. All my life, I have been shadowed by conspiracy. The axe, the dagger, the block, they are as familiar to me as bring flowers to a countryman. Fears and doubts circle my head like black crows around a copse. Yet every time a new treachery is revealed, I am strangely surprised. Foolishly, I expect good in a world where men pursue evil. To live or die amongst you all. To lay down for my God and for my kingdom and for my people. My honor and my blood. I know I have the body of a weak and feeble woman. Yeah, now she comes to it. Now she cogs and the I dice. I have the heart and stomach of a king and a king of England too. Half her nobles are Protestant and in open rebellion rule, you say. She barely survives. I fear neither Mary Stuart in France nor her mother in Scotland. Nor your own Catholic nobles who live in the north, hard upon the Scottish border. Why should I? They are not persecuted. I am no tyrant. Then marry me, my love. In this land, there will be but one mistress and no master. For only when she is married to a loving subject of mine will I be safe from the assassin, the fanatic, and the rebellion in her cause. No true monarch will turn her back on that, not even Mary of Scotland. That monarch is first a woman. You would never ignore such an offer for a pretty fellow. This woman is first a monarch. Well, she is quite beautiful. Oh, Get out! I am a it in me to no. send you to cruel oppression for her! We mourn because the Scottish court does not. Did you believe I would send you back to Scotland at the head of a great army? Did you believe I would sacrifice my reputation on your behalf? It is not enough, madam, to speak one's mind in season and out as you do. That is not the conduct of a queen. It is the outpouring of a pampered woman demanding that all indulge her. It does not surprise me that you are here, helpless, and that your brother rules. You are not fit for the high office to which you were born. I fear her execution. It threatens me. She is an anointed queen as I am. Madam, if your head had matched your heart, I would be the one awaiting death. Oh, laugh, big sister. And what are you going as? I am not heir to the throne. I can go in cap and apron, for all anyone cares. Oh, my clever sister Besh would advise it. She used to embroider presents for me. I am a princess, not a haberdasher. Stitch your own shirts, Prince of Wales. 
The king is dead. How dare you talk to me like that? I'll dare more than that. Do you think that a state runs itself? Or that you can wave England's business aside because you're too idle, or too peevish, or too hot after that simpering baggage? I'll see to her, God help me. And I'll not be railed at by any royal hoyden who does not know her place and forgets the respect due to her king. I may forget what is due to you, but I shall never forget what is due to something you seem to have forgotten. And what might that be? England! Oh, Ned. To see you so, so changed. So careless of all government. It's not worthy. What I do is my affair, madam. If the day ever comes when you're on the throne, then you can take care of England. By God, I will! Three eventful years, Master Drake. And all the seas of our globe have passed beneath your keel. Your holds, they say, are heavy with treasure. Exceeding heavy, ma'am. Do you know the value of what you carry? To the groat, ma'am. Didst think, after all that's passed, that it would end this way? No, ma'am. Nor I. And the leader of this expedition? There is but one, ma'am. But one. And who is this one? Drink, ma'am. Francis Drake, El Draco the Dragon. There are those who look upon Master Drake as more a pirate than an explorer. Our Spanish cousins are sore disgruntled, so I'm told. Your escapades have much offended them. Indeed, King Philip has asked me for your head. Then why should Drake succeed where Great Magellan failed? Ship's carpenter to ship's master. You must have valued his seamanship highly. I did. He was a good mariner. Not good enough to survive, it would seem. The ship went down with all hands, did she not? Any ship would have sunk in a tempest like that, ma'am. Yours didn't. God was kind. Kinder, perhaps, than you realize. And was she all you'd heard she was? All and many times more, Your Majesty, to return empty-handed. Would have meant a death as certain as drowning. I shut him in a pen on the foredeck. <laughs> Not in fear await its touch, good Master Drake. For here in England we approve our heroes, not cut them down. But not to upset our Spanish cousin, we shall ask the French ambassador to be the headsman. I ask you why we must tear ourselves apart for this small question of religion. Catholic or Protestant? You think it's small? It is your death warrant. All I need do is sign it. Mary, if you sign that paper, you will be murdering your own sister. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvellous in our eyes. Then you can marry us. <laughs> marry you. <laughs> oh, perhaps he does not know enough English to perform a ceremony. Alas, madame. In this matter, I can be of no help to you. I am not your Elizabeth. I am no man's Elizabeth. And if you think to rule, you are mistaken. I will have one mistress here. And no master! A puddle in the way. Majesty. A puddle? Tell Philip, I fear neither him, nor his priests, nor his armies. Tell him, if he wants to shake his little fist at us, we're ready to give him such a bite he'll wish he'd kept his hands in his pockets. There is a wind coming, madam, that will sweep away your pride. Who can command the wind, sir? I have a hurricane in me that will strip Spain bare if you dare to try me! I murdered God's anointed queen. And now God's most dutiful son makes holy war to punish me. My loving people, we see the sails of the enemy approaching. 
we hear the Spanish guns over the water. Soon now, we will meet them face to face. I am resolved in the midst and heat of the battle to live or die amongst you all. Mr. Tilney! Have a care with my name. You will wear it out. The Queen of England does not attend exhibitions of public lewdness, so something is out of joint. Come here, Master Kent. Let me look at you. Yes, the illusion is remarkable. And your error, Mr. Tilney, is easily forgiven. But I know something of a woman and a man's profession. Yes, by God, I do know about that. There was a wager, I remember, as to whether a play could show the very truth and nature of love. I think you lost it today. You are an eager boy. Did you like the play? I liked it when she stabbed herself, Your Majesty. How is this to end? As stories must when love's denied, with tears and a journey. Those whom God has joined in marriage, not even I can put asunder. Tell Master Shakespeare something more cheerful next time, for Twelfth Night. Too late, too late. 